Great one here in central Pennsylvania, 8-6 Bucknell over Penn State here on the Patriot League on ESPN. Sam Cooperman, Adam Pascal with you. Let's tell you a little bit about how we got here in this back and forth affair. And Bucknell scored the first two of the game, and then Penn State came right back. We'll take a look. Here's Penn State, and the guy who's got the most goals on their side, Matt Costin. What a rip. You see he beats his defender topside, and here's Austin Terry. Gets top side to end the first half. Great strong-handed move with that right hand just when Bucknell needed it. And here's the teamwork. Bucknell spins the ball up top. And that's Welford letting it fly. And Harry Welford's got two to lead the Bison along with Austin Terry. And we saw both of them. And, Adam, we, we were talking as we looked through the stat sheet, ground balls dead even between these teams and shots. Penn State only a couple more shots on goal. Bucknell with two more. What stands out to you on the stat sheet? You would think that face-offs would have a bigger impact, but Bucknell's been able to fight, fight through that and done, done a good job, especially late in the second quarter, really maximizing their opportunities. Unfortunately, here we see number five, Wearing a boot won't be on the field for the rest of the game. Unfortunately, that's a big-time loss for Bucknell in the defensive midfield. Sophomore Richie Striano, he came up limping inside the final minute of the opening half. As Cravato for Bucknell in the home whites goes against Hudson Bond, the Penn State freshman. And it's awarded to the home team. The Bison will start the second half with it. Nick Cravato coming into today, sixth in the nation in face-off percentage, but was getting beaten the bulk of the time by Bond. The officials have a little consultation here. Scott Rayburn, the leader of the three-man crew. You can really see the confidence that Coach Federock and his staff have in the defensive short stick. The short stick midfielders do a great job. Who's going to step in for Strayano? Are they going to add a player? Or are they just going to lean on the three that have been doing the job so far? Called a foul on Bucknell. So Penn State will open up the third with possession. Nittany Lions 2-5, and five, a deceiving record. They just played three straight top five ranked Ivy League teams. There's a burst to the back of the coal, but Tallarico swats it away on the Costin pass. And stayed a little reboot here. Shot misses wide. O'Halloran was in the way, and Ethan Long didn't have much room to shoot at. You can see how different that is. Matt Costin is going up top into the formation. He got a lot of opportunities pushing from X. Penn State, this is an adjustment coming out of halftime that Bucknell's going to have to respond to. Kelly up top, swinging around for Penn State. From the right side, Costin. Sorry, Sam, there's your two-man game. Costin has the matchup he wants. Can they get him the ball? Jeb Brentfleck flicks it back up top. Penn State not getting much penetration here. Bison with Wellington. Canvassing the area. Little ball fake. Not much doing. 20 on the shot clock. Costin makes his move. Gets around Higgins. Saved by O'Halloran. That was an awesome save. The big right. He went into the splits kind of. Looks like he got that with his left shoulder. O'Halloran has been the difference for the Herd since he's been put into the lineup. Max Nolan drew the start for Bucknell, and he's been the keeper for the bulk of the year, but Richie O'Halloran, both freshmen at 6-6, took over after Penn State pulled ahead 3-2, scoring three unanswered midway through the first. And the Bison get their unit loaded here. That's a stat that Bucknell is leading now with more saves in the goal, 8-7. Great job by that Bucknell defense. You see how quick those adjacent and slides are coming to the help, forcing these Penn State shooters to really carry a little deeper. Bucknell from the near side. Work Dutch Furlong, hop step. Spins around. Reverses course. And he hits the top of the crossbar. Just a little flick there, and he couldn't put it through. In the Penn State goal, Kind of taking a page out of Bucknell's playbook. It looks like Jack Frassian, only his second game played of the year, the freshman from Annapolis, played high school ball at the Bullis School with Bucknell's Connor Davis. He's guarding the Penn State net. Just to take back to the other end of the field, that was a great deliberate one-on-one -on -one iso by Dutch Furlong, and that's a big-time save. The young man just put into the goal for Penn State. 
Nice one-on-one -on -one point blank save. Pops that off his near shoulder. Penn State gets the ball. And here's their second midfield earlier than in the first half. They use the second midfield, like you mentioned, Adam. Shovel it over to the other side. Penn State team that's trying to get settled after a number of close losses. More and misses on the low shot, but they keep it. That shot hits off that near pipe. Rich O'Halloran once again goes down to meet the shooter. Goalie's best friend is that pipe. That's all he gave him to look at. Good look in front and an over the shoulder shot for a goal for the Nittany Lions. Jake Morin sticks it through to trim it to one. Big ground ball in front of the cage. Way to collect that Lucy. Jake Morin picks up this right hand and just kind of tosses it back. Oh, I'm sorry, left handed, just kind of tosses it back and he pins that top corner. Great job that second midfield produces, bringing it within one for Penn State. There's no way he could see the goal from there, right? Like I, His vantage point had to be very limited. Could he see the goal? Question is, could he do it again? That was just one of those opportunities. Right place, right time. Cravado on the faceoff for Bucknell. Takes it to the side. Furlong answers right back. 9-7 Bucknell. Another big time faceoff. We've mentioned Cravado's name all day. You can see the transition. Fundamentally, you usually never throw the ball to the short side because it doesn't force a slide. But Dutch Furlong catches this pass. Beats his defender who's on ball underneath. And it's go time. There you go. The lefty, high to low. Tough save. Great shot by number 36. Dutch Furlong and Bucknell goes back up by two. Frassian hasn't seen live action since February 5th in the season opener for Penn State against Lafayette. So they put him in for Alaric Fayak, who's been the starter. As Cravado coming in hot again. This bouncer goes in back. And Bucknell will get settled from the back side of the goal, but you have a keeper in Frassian, a freshman who hasn't played in so long, and he's got to come up big here for the Nittany Lions. Penn State being much more deliberate, pushing the two defensemen that aren't covering Connor Davis. We've seen Terry and Furlong be really, really aggressive and deliberate here early in the third quarter. Cam Doolin gets hit a few times, sticks with it. He's got Davis over his left shoulder. Tries to get the ball over there, but it's picked up by Sam Sweeney. And we got whistles all over the place. A flag from the side of the goal. And Bucknell is staying situated offensively. So it looks like the Bison will get the man up. You see on the field, or coming off the field right now, that's Brian Thompson, the senior wearing Townsend, I apologize, wearing number 16 for Penn State, Connor Darcy. John Connor Darcy hailed from the town of Wellesley, Massachusetts. Played at Penn State, unfortunately. Was taken away from us a little too early, a lot too early. What a great young man, what a great smile. That Penn State number 16 is very sacred, very treasured. Townsend, one of the captains for the Nittany Lions. He committed the penalty there on that push. Bucknell with numbers, up two. Sam, I'm saying we need something out of 17 here. The lefty's been quiet so far in this third quarter, but the shooter can shoot. And there's Harry Welford doing his part. You see Bucknell playing almost like a 2-4 with four right across. Once again, trying to get guys covering covering players so Connor Davis can step off and get free. And here you go, Bucknell spinning the ball. There's their roll off. There's a the crash right there on the crease. Opportunity, Doolin, the guy you just talked about, had a good look, but it's blocked away by Frassian. Pitches it across. Welford back to Doolin. Other way, Welford, let it rip, but it doesn't go through as the shot clock is at 48. Sam, it seems that Penn State's playing a box and one. They are shutting off Connor Davis, paying special attention to him, forcing once again things to do that you're not used to doing. Hopefully this pays off to Bucknell's benefit. Penn State has to prepare for a Connor Davis with 28 goals. Look in front and Bucknell's not able to get that to go. And the Nittany Lions trying to take it away. Connor Davis, pig number 45 for Bucknell, tries to turn this into a track meet and get downfield. He forces Penn State to get sped up a little bit there. And it works to Bucknell's advantage. Connor Davis, while he's been denied the ball a whole lot there, Adam, he that time just tried to go for the come from behind defense and he made Jack Posey kind of hesitate and heave it upfield when he wasn't ready to. Connor Davis just trying to help his team any way he can. 
And believe me, by drawing that short stick on the extra man, he makes Coach Danahy's life a little easier, but just see the hustle. The hustle. Great job by number 45. Bucknell still in the man up here. Up two goals, trying to knock off their in-state regional foe for the first time in over a decade. Last played in 2013 from the back side of the goal. Bucknell. Barkowskis. You see how slow that, that slide from the crease is to go to Barkowskis. If he takes another step out, he might be able to pull off that question mark, maybe an inside roll. But there's number two. That's the Penn State stopper. House seems to be the guy with the short stick the coaches trust the most. Bucknell back to it. Austin Terry lets it go and puts it through. I'm sorry, I meant to say Haas earlier, but that's Terry for Bucknell. He didn't do much in the first half. Maybe he heard us chirping them at coming out of break, but big time goal. That's the second one. Terry's been very deliberate in what he's doing, going right-handed and left-handed. Part of that youthful movement on this Bucknell offense, doing a great job. Kevin Parnham hit him with the physicality, but it didn't matter, and Terry sticks his third of the game. Bison by three here with nine to go in the third. 